Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Akers and I used to run some really fun art um, workshops alongside uh, Creative Active Lives um, with my business Acres of Art. Now, since the lockdown happened, we've been unable to do these uh, workshops, um, which is really unfortunate because they were so fun, they were really, really popular. So what we've decided to do is to create some online workshops so that you can join in and you can enjoy yourself and the first one that we're going to do today is called play with clay so i'm going to show you how to create a coil pot but in the pdfs that you've been sent all the files that you've been sent you can have a look and get some inspiration get some ideas you don't have to make a k coil pot it's just what i've decided to show you today because the techniques that i'm going to show you can actually be transferred and used for um for any of these these things that you want to make so i wanted to show you a couple of examples to start with um one of them is this lovely little wall hanging um so this is a just a heart so we've cut out a heart shape and put a hole in it so there's the flat piece of of clay and then all we've done is by using the techniques that I'm going to show you today is coiled the clay together and stuck it on as an ornament that you can hang or just place on the side um, on a table or anything like that the other one is now my son made this yesterday I'm so pleased with him we had great fun <coughs> doing it and this is a little monster pot so um, you should hopefully have a few googly eyes for you to create something interesting. You can add whatever you like, you can add teeth. You can, my son added a little tail, he even put some little bits of detail into it. And basically, once this is dried, you can actually paint it with acrylic paint, but I'm gonna show you the techniques that we need to use today to create something. So, first of all, I'm gonna show you some of the tools and things that we need to, to use to create a piece of clay work. And one of the first things is um, something called slip. Now slip is just really soggy clay. So if you can see this, it's, it's pretty gross. It's really sticky. And to just to create this, all you have to do is take a little piece of the clay that you were given, just a small chunk, pop it into a pot and mix it with water. Warm water often helps a little bit to, to make it a little bit easier. So that is used to help stick things together basically. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, a rolling pin, because when we're doing the base of anything, we kind of need to roll it out and make sure it's all even. Um, then we need our clay tools. Now, I have a few here, some with flat ends, some with little patterns on the end of them. You don't need all of these tools really for what we're making because um, you really just need something sharp to cut things out with and maybe something with a slightly flatter edge or your fingers to smooth things out. So you don't necessarily need lots of clay tools, it's just helpful to have a few there to help you out. So I've got a few chunks of clay here because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you very briefly at the beginning just how to make the start of a monster pot if that's what you want to make. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the coil pot. So all you need for the monster pot is a chunk of clay and you just work it with your fingers. Now you could use a bigger piece than this, you can use a smaller piece, you can make it whatever size you want. And all you're doing is you're pushing your thumbs inside to make this kind of bowl. It doesn't matter if it's messy, anything you like. It really doesn't matter. It's just to really squish the clay, have a good feel of it, and, and just really enjoy yourself, because that's what I love about clay. It's really tactile, it feels really nice. So what we're gonna do is then you just put it down on your board and you push the bottom down a little bit just so you get a flat bottom and there you've got the start of your monster pot obviously that's very rushed and, and quick because I want to really show you the coil pot but I just wanted to say if you wanted to do a monster pot this is how we start so I'll put that to the side for now and what we'll do is we'll begin making our coil pot so we take a piece of clay it's really nice and soft if you ever find that it's gone a little bit dry try not to leave it out too much make sure you leave it covered in plastic or um, wrapped up because it can dry out quite easily but when you're working with it like this in the next half an hour it should be absolutely fine just to leave on the side like I have so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start 
by rolling out our base. So you want to take a piece, you can make this whatever size you want, I'm just going to make one by eye. Now what you want to do is I would say it's probably about a centimetre, half a centimetre thick. You don't want to roll it out too thin because if you make it too thin it will crack and you don't want that to happen. Um, as it dries it will crack so that's one of the problems. Um, I'm just going to continue rolling this out to get it to the flatness that I want it to be. Now that I've got it to the right thickness, this is going to be the base of my coil pot. Also, it can be the start of your heart-shaped ornament if you want it to be. This is how we would start it. So um, you just cut it into the shape that you want. You could do a star you could do a heart, you can do any shape you like for your ornament. This one, I'm actually going to make an oval pot, just because I feel like it, rather than doing round. Um, and we just have to cut around it, just to smooth out the edges. And as you can see there, we've got a really nice smooth edge, and I've got my oval shape. One thing I would recommend as you and there we go. Right the way around my coil pot, I've done my hash marks. Now that is gonna help them, the two pieces bind together. When, when you're doing your um, ornament, because it's on a flat thing like this, you can just hash mark all over the whole of the base and then start doing what I'm now going to do to add all your little pieces so that they all stick together. So then we take our coil and on one side of the coil, you do the same. So you're gonna hashtag, put hash marks all over one side of your coil, like this, so that when the two join, they have kind of a roughed up surface, which means that they will connect together and they're not just gonna fall. You're working is just to keep lifting it up a little bit and putting it back down again, because it could stick to the board and we really don't want that to happen because once you've done all your beautiful work and you try and lift it off and it's stuck you could end up ruining ruining it so i do recommend that we lift it up occasionally so it doesn't really matter what the underside looks like the top side's going to be fairly covered but now we're going to begin to make our coils now mine isn't just going to be a simple coil going round like this i'm going to put a few shapes in there i'm going to make it look pretty um you can do whatever you like. There should be um, in your pieces of um, PDFs that you've been sent, there should be some good ideas for you just to get you started, but you can really do whatever you like. So what we're gonna do now is take a piece of clay and as you can see, I'm just gonna roll it out. And I'm gonna roll it out to whatever thickness I feel suits this this pot but really I guess a centimetre round it could be slightly thinner it could... if it goes a little bit too thin in places I just kind of fold it back together again give it another roll it will all even out in the end squish it back together it's really really versatile it's really easy to work with um, and you don't need to be too fussy about it it can be varying thicknesses as long as it's not too different so there we go we've got a nice little kind of snake going on there so now i'm going to pick this tool because it has quite a sharp edge and this is one of the main things that you need to know about fixing two pieces of clay together you have to do this because if you just made this coil and basically just put it on like this it wouldn't stay together so as it dries it would just fall apart so what we want to do is something that we call hashtagging. We've all heard of that, but this is a very different one. And what I'm going to do is all around the edge, because this is where I want it to stick, is I'm going to do these little hash lines. Hash markings all the way around the edge. Right the way around, so that this will attach to each other. So when I've done that, I'll explain what we do next.
fall apart. So what I'm going to do now is be a little bit quiet whilst I basically put hash marks all along here and then I'll show you how to stick them together. The end. See how if I bring this close, you can see it a little bit rough. That's what's really gonna help stick things together. If you're doing your monster pot, just quickly, it's my little basic monster pot, and you want to add an eye, you basically just do exactly the same thing. So you're gonna put your hash marks on this side, your hash marks on this side, and then what we need is a little bit of this slip. So the gooey stuff that helps stick things together, and then you're gonna stick your eye on like that. That's just to quickly basically show you if you're gonna do a monster pot, what you need to do. But the, the process is the same. So we've got our hash marks all the way around. And then what we need to do is just get a little bit of slip so that it's all sticky. And we're just gonna rub a little bit of it. We don't wanna get rid of our hash marks by doing this, but just putting a little bit of slip onto the base. You can see where that wet clay has just gone and then we're gonna to start to coil. So choose an edge. So I'm gonna bring it round to this edge. I'm gonna flatten that down a little bit so I know that it's really stuck. What we want to do with this is we want to make sure that the coil pattern is really obvious on the outside, but on the inside, it doesn't matter if we close it off a bit because it just kind of helps to make it sealed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna Keep going all the way around with my coil. If you see any little cracks, just get a little bit of the slip that might still be on your finger and just run over it. Because you don't want any cracks in there. You don't want the cracks to show. So then we're gonna keep going around like this. And when you get back to where you started, and you see where you started, you're going to need to do hash marks across the top. So I'm gonna do that now so that everything links together. I'm just making sure that it sits really closely around the edge and looks nice. And then I'm going to do my hash marks across the top to link it all together. Try not to go too close to the edge because you don't want that to be seen on the outer rim. Doesn't matter if it goes on the inside, you're not gonna be seeing that too much. What I'm doing now actually, is just running my tool around the inside, if you can see this, just to kind of push the edges together a little bit. See how, because the inside, it doesn't matter. You don't wanna lose the definition on the outside, but just to make sure it really stays, you want to push through just taking a little bit of the clay from the coil to link that coil to the base. I'm gonna lift it up and see if I can show you. Can you see? So there's no gap there now around that edge because I've managed, so there's still a gap on the outside there, but there's no gap on the inside. Now I've done my hash marks around here again. I don't know if I'm gonna need any slip. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with that coil like this all the way around, put your hash marks on, making sure they all sit together nicely and then they sit together like that. Can you see how we are starting to build up a coil around the outside? You can neaten it off a bit so that you don't see the hash marks if you want to. You don't have to. All of this is just to have a play. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's to give you a go at how fun it is to play with clay. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now 
is I'm going to make one more coil and then I'm going to do a little pattern to go around the top. I'm not going to make my pot too high. You can make yours as high as you like. You can come up to here. I'm just going to do a little pot, little dish to give you the idea of what we want to do. broke then, doesn't matter, squish it back together, carry on rolling. And what I want to do is actually make sure that it's pretty much the same thickness as the last one on this one. a bit off because I don't want it to be too long. The longer you make it, the harder it is to work with. So it's fine to kind of stop where I have here because I can just join it and I'll show you how to do that. And just join it onto the next one. It's basically the easiest way to do it. And there we go. I've now got a, another Snake, I reckon that's probably going to be all I need for now in terms of the coil part, because then I'm going to start decorating it and going to do some patterns in it. Because you could just keep going with the coil until you've got it as high as you want. I quite like the idea of uh, decorating it a little bit, putting a little bit more into it. <clears throat> so we have that now, and remembering we have to hashtag things. If you're going to join two pieces together, you're going to want to have to, you're going to want to do the little tip here. So you need to just do that on the tip and on the tip of this, but we need to hashtag all along the one side again, don't we? So we need to make sure that one side stays nice and smooth and the other side has the hash marks all over it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now is a little bit time consuming sometimes but it really is effective because if you don't do this your whole pot will fall apart because as it dries it won't be stuck together and then you'll just have pieces just coming off. Here we go, we've done it all the way along that side and I have to do it all the way along here as well. I want to give you just a few little pointers if you're making your monster pot. Give it as many eyes as you want, but use the same technique just by doing the hash marks and blending it in a little bit so that the eyes don't fall off. Teeth, everything. I'll show you my sons again so you can just have a little look. See how he's blended the bottom of the teeth in, but they left the top. That will have hash marks on each one. Try. He's made maybe the, some of the teeth a little bit too thin. I don't want them to break. I think it'd be a bit sad if that happens. But if you can have a look at the back here, this is where the eyes are. Then um, this is where the eyes are basically blended into the back. So he's used the hashtag technique. He's only eight, so he's done a fantastic job. He's used the hashtag techniques, and he has done an excellent job. But that's what you want to do if you're making the monster pot. That's what you want to do if you're making the monster pot. Just make sure that. Um, each piece is blended in so that it doesn't fall off. Now I'm going to continue with our little coil pot here and I need to do the hash marks all the way around this as well. Don't have to be that neat. You're not going to see this part. If you noticed I haven't actually used any more of the the tools just this one to cut to cut out and to to do my hash marks there are certain ones that you can use um, with a flatter edge 
that you could go around the inside with, make sure it's all really smooth in there so that it doesn't come apart. But basically, really with this technique, we're using our fingers. I'm gonna go all the way around. There we go. So I'm gonna turn this around a bit. So you can see, so I've done the hash marks across the top. Now I'm gonna join these two together. I'm gonna to get a little bit of slip because it does sometimes dry out a little bit. What we want to do is make sure that that joins. So I'm going to use the slip and my fingers just to join that together. So, whereas before that was two pieces, I've now done a little blend there to get it together. And I'm just gonna use a tool to get rid of that little lump. There we go. So now you can't tell that there was a there was a join, but I did use slip and I used the hash marks to make sure that that join won't break when it comes to it drying out. This clay that we're using is air drying clay, so it will just dry out eventually. Just if it's left on its own, it will dry. And then if you want to, you can paint it. If you don't, you can just leave it. I quite like the natural clay. Um, but my son really wants to paint his monster pots, so I'll probably let him do that at some point. Another messy job for the day. Right, so, I think, I have gone about as far as I want to go. I've got here three on this side, and how many have I got on this side? I've only got two. So what I want to do is just continue around until I meet this edge so that I end up having three. So I'm just going to make a little bit extra. So I'll just finish this off by continuing these hash marks and then I'll show you what I mean. Make it a little bit more. So there we go. So I've stuck that together. I'm just making sure, I'm just going around and making sure that I have quite a firm hold there because you really don't want it falling apart. Now, on some of these edges, you can actually see the hash marks. So what I'm going to do now is going to take a tool and I'm just going to very gently just go along with my fingers and the tool and just try and neaten it up a little bit because I'd rather not I want to see those lovely coils, but I don't want to see the hash lines in there. So I'm just going to go along like this. It's not on every part of it, which is good. Just go around, neatening it up a bit and making sure that you can't see too many. Don't be too fussy about it, it really doesn't matter too much. Just neatening it up like that. You can see how it's a lot smoother there. So we've got three coils, but as you go around to this side, we've only got two because of the way we started. So what I want to do is just make another little bit and it's just gonna go from here, where our three is, to here where there's only two. You see where it suddenly goes to three? Because of how we started our coil. So that's what I'm going to do now. Run my fingers around the inside again to make sure that it's secure. Because as I said, it doesn't matter what the inside looks like, but we don't want to lose that lovely pattern of our coil on the outside. So it's a little bit more clay and I'm just gonna make that a little bit of an extra coil. where I want it to get to. You could have it uneven if you want to. If you want two on one side and three on the other, it's absolutely fine, it's up to you. But I am just going to make that, I think I've made it a bit too thin, so we'll do that again. I've just made a little extra bit. It's going to finish, yep, just about there. So I've just pulled off the excess bit that I don't need. And just do the same again. 
hash marks all the way around up to the point where you want it to meet and the same on your little worm. And again, just make sure the end meets with this end. A little bit of slip. Ooh, too much there. It's a little bit of a gooey one, but I love it. <laughs> I love how it feels. I love playing with it. And it is just really super fun. So let's just put a little bit more of that on there. And then I'm gonna blend that together. There you go, this creates a three all the way around. But you can see that little pattern where it starts and where it finishes, I really like that. So that creates a little bit of interest there. I'm just gonna go around again. I'm gonna make sure that the bits that are gonna be seen are quite smooth. So I'm just using my fingers, maybe a little bit of slip across the top. going to make sure that the bits that I want seen are really smooth so I'm going to concentrate on that a little bit and then I'll show you again. So we've got, I love this bit, the way it's got a really nice pattern in it. And then the rest has just got three layers all the way around. Now what I want to do to give this pot a little bit more of an interest is I want to make a few fun quills and patterns to stand up on it. So for basically like, like these, but they're going to stand up around the edge. With this one, you're literally going to roll it out as I'm going to do now and make them into little coils and then you do hash marks on one side of it and not on the other because you want to still see the coil. Use a little bit of slip and then stick it down and you'll get this lovely ornament with lots of lovely swells and balls all over it that I decided to do. Um, you can use any pattern you want really, it's just using these techniques and making sure that you use your hash marks and your slip each time you do it. Now, as you can see, because I've been working on this for a while, that's just broken because the clay is getting a little bit dry. My hands are quite dry as well. So I'm going to use a little bit of slip and I'm just going to mix it back together because what we want to do, just make sure that the clay stays wet enough to work with. This isn't like working on a pottery wheel where they use tons of water. You might have seen them doing it. And that's so that the clay is really wet and easy to manipulate when they're on a pottery wheel. But we don't want to do that. We just want it wet enough to be able to um, to roll it out without it cracking. We don't want lots of cracks in it because um, that's then going to cause problems in itself. So I'm going to get another big, big, big chunk of clay there and I'm going to... If the bigger chunk you've got, the less likely it is to dry out. But if you, if you know it's going to be sitting there for a while, I'd recommend just covering it over with a little bit of uh, like a plastic bag, a bit of cling film maybe just to keep the moisture in. So I'm going to roll this out again. I don't want these to be too thick, quite like the coils to look a little bit more delicate. So I'm just going to keep rolling. 
You can make this as long as you like because you're just going to make a coil and then you're going to cut it off. With the heart shape that I did, I made lots of different sized coils um, just to vary the pattern. But with this one, because I want it all to be the same all the way around, I'm going to make the same size coil each time. So I'm going to roll this out. And all we're going to do is we're going to start with one edge. I'm just going to roll it together. You don't need to worry too much about hash marking this because it's such a tight coil. It doesn't necessarily need it. So I've made that coil. I'm going to push like that so that the end just smooths out like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit of time making quite a few of these because I know that I want them all to fit around the edge of this like this. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just making a number of these, as many as I think I'm going to need. I'm uh, maybe 15, not sure. Um, if I need an extra one just to squash in at the end, then I can do that as well. So what I want to do, because I want them to be all of a similar size, I'm going to coil it up, I'm going to measure it against the other one, and then I'm going to do a quick little nick. Notice how I'm making one bit slightly flat because for this I want it to sit on the edge so there needs to be a little bit of a flat edge so I'm going to continue with that and this is great because look they're both the same size but they look completely different you don't have to have them looking the same um, they can all be different they can all be varying but as long as they're the same size so they all sit along the top like that that's what we want to do I'm just going to keep making those for now If you get any cracks, just smooth them out with your fingers. Use a bit of slip if you want to. Just make sure that they all sit together nicely because you don't want them to fall apart. That's broken, so we're going to roll out another bit. Can be a bit tricky but just doesn't matter if it looks rough doesn't matter if it's uneven it's just a bit of fun having a play it's gone a bit thin oh, board's moving there this bit sometimes it will break we need to make sure we keep it a little bit moist because as you roll it out and the thinner it gets it is going to get dry so to work with it fairly quickly of a wobble of the camera when I'm rolling out but can't be helped at the moment I'm afraid um, hopefully that's not too distracting for you so I've got eight I'm going to continue just making a few more um, possibly till I've got about 12 maybe and then we're going to see if they fit all the way around the edge and if they don't I can always make a few more that one didn't work so well. So let's try another one. Sometimes you're going to need a little bit of slip or water just to um, loosen it up a bit because it can be it can dry out a little bit and then it's kind of hard to work with. Okay. You want to keep it moist. Uh, 
There we go. Got another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think we'll make twelve. Then we'll see how we go with that. slightly uneven they're not all perfect they don't really need to be I quite like it like that two more and then we're going to try and stick them together I'm going to show you how to do that I'm trying to make the camera wobble less them all in a row so they can see that they're all the same way but to be honest if you want to you can mix it up I am just a little bit fussy about it and I want them all to be facing the same way so I'm making sure that they are before I start sticking them on so I know which way that I want to put them on cracked a little bit so I'm just going to roll it out again use a little bit of slip because as I'm leaving it out and having thin rolls of it, it it does dry out but that's why we just get a little bit more clay add a bit of slip dampen it up a little bit again and we can keep working with it if it does get too dry and really starts to crack and fall apart I'd just discard that piece of clay and use another one because it won't really look as nice and it won't stick as well if it's really started to dry out but as you can see just adding that in no cracks now it's fine make this last piece so i think that'll be 12 now the count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay so we've got twelve um don't know if that's going to be enough to go right the way around the pot but we will have a look and then we can always make another few just to to make sure so to stick these pieces together if you've noticed i've made a flat edge what i'm going to do is put my hash marks onto the flat edge just as we have done right the way through this I want it to go that way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very fussy. Um, and again, just put hash marks on here. Maybe a little bit of slip if you think it's dried out a little bit. And then we just stick it down like that. And can you see if I hold this up for you? Just like that. I've stuck that down, it's going to look like snails all the way around the edge, isn't it? <laughs> so, same again with this piece, but this time you want it to touch the other piece as well. So we put the hashtag marks, put our hash marks on the bottom and next to it here. But what we want is just to make sure these two edges, so rough the edges up just a little bit. I'm going to have a look at which way I want that to go. Make sure I rough up just that point there only the tiny little bit on that point where I want the two to sit together a little bit of slip underneath because it's dried out a little bit and there you've got your next one sitting next to each other and I've just put those little hash marks there so that they sit together and they'll kind of bind on that bit as well so I'm just going to continue on with that, going all the way around. But what I want to do first is just on the inside, so you don't see it, is make sure that these 
coils really linked together. So if you have a look on this side, I've just smoothed this bit here so that they stick onto the top of the coil part. But that side still looks like it's kind of balancing there because of the way that we've done it. So I'm gonna continue with these 12 all the way around the pot and I'll get back to you. I'm just putting some slip around the inside here. I'm just making sure that they all fit together and I want to take a look at the outside. Make sure that the outside is smooth. Because that's the bit that everyone's going to see. If you're making your monster pot, you can add these on as scales if you want to. You can do any pattern you like and it's just the same technique. So it will be making sure that they stick together and they're not gonna fall off. You can give it 20 eyes if you want to, as long as you make these lines and marks on them. And don't make anything too tiny or thin. I would recommend not to make anything thinner than about half a centimetre because it may just break as it dries. So I do have to warn you about that and you really don't want it to break after all this hard work, after however long it takes you to create your masterpiece, you don't want it falling apart because that would be really sad. So I'm gonna be quiet now and I'm just gonna keep going. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a gap there. So I need to make about three more. And didn't I say 15 at the beginning? Should have just made 15. I was right, <laughs> we needed 15. But this isn't measured, this isn't a specific sized part. This is just me making it up really as I go along. So you can do exactly the same. You can do it big, you can do it small, you can do it high, you can do it low. Mine is just gonna have one more layer across the top um, of a of a coil, I think, uh, but I'm gonna make it look pretty. I'm gonna twist it, so I'll show you that later. I'm just gonna make these last three and finish this off, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna finish this pot. I don't want to make it too tall, um, because really I'm just showing you the techniques on how to make it. It doesn't need to be like a, a foot high or anything like that, so. you want that's basically what we do so we have our three items our little ornament that can hang on the wall a clay coil pot or one of my favorites is our little monster pot that you can stick googly eyes into and there you are I hope you enjoyed your clay session um, and there will be more to follow. We will have, be having a, a painting workshop. We will be doing a card making workshop. We will also be doing um, a origami stars um, and 
a jewellery making workshop which is really cool which we'll be making lizard key rings so that one's really fun so come back and join me again for, some, for another workshop soon thanks